Hey, it's JC1424 once again with NASCAR Thunder 2004. In this episode of our third season in career mode, we are going to be completing race 11 of 36, the Pontiac Excitement 400 at Richmond International Raceway. In the last episode, we went to California Speedway for race 10 of 36, the Auto Club 500, where we mostly ran like third place trying to push Dale Earnhardt Jr. towards um, Ricky Rudd, who was leading the darn thing, and he wound up DNFing, and I got a free position for that. But after pit stops, um, my pit crew made a mistake. My freaking tire carrier, not changer, couldn't carry the tire, so I don't know what the fuck he's doing here. That lost a bunch of time, and we tried gaining some of it back. We wound up finishing like 14th or 15th, something like that. But uh, yeah, we could have got a top 10 finish, I think, at best. But in this one, uh, Richmond, if we qualify on pole, we could keep the lead. But if we don't qualify on pole, I think we could still run well. I'm going to try to see if I can get a top finish today in this race. Uh, the last episode at California, who was that? Yeah, Dale and our junior got his third win of the season, I think, over there. And if he hadn't won it, I think it would have been Ricky Rudd. But, you know, only Ricky Rudd got that DNF. So... Now Dale Nard Jr. is 33 points behind me as the points leader. Yeah, that was his third one of the season. Tony Stewart is 16 points behind. And uh, yeah, we've got to finish, you know, not too far behind Tony Stewart or maybe in front of him in order to keep this points lead. I don't think Dale Nard Jr. is going to be able to do it. Uh, Mark Martin is almost 100 points back. And yeah, we still got a pretty close battle. We have 10 races into the season, so that is great. And we've got the driver spec levels, you know, just a bunch of stuff left over from how much bumping and banging at Martinsville had. Really just Greg Biffle, but everybody else is kind of disappearing. Earl Hall still hasn't raced because he's ashamed of his stupidity, but still blames him for it secretly in the, the grudges and alliances system in this game. That, that freaking Daytona bullcrap. Yeah, and yeah, we work with Dale Earnhardt Jr. so much that his alliance is up to 42%. So, if I get Dale Earnhardt Jr. in this race, he's going to get the fuck out of my way. Knowing EA Sports, probably not. He's probably just going to block me anyways because it's a dumb game. So we're going to quick select the chassis and engine body. The chassis and engine are fresh, and the body was used in the last race. And because we kept it so clean, not bumping and banging with everybody, it's only 98 condition. So this is a car rating of 73. This is exactly what I need for a race like this, so let's not waste. So let's go out there and try to get a top 5, if not at least a top 10. My setup for this qualifying session is one turn of wedge and 22 PSI. And for the race, we're going to just be turning up the tire pressure to 25 so the tires won't wear down too quickly and that setup was actually quite acceptable for me whenever I was you know just practicing this race and you know getting good feel for the track and everything now whenever I started my practice session for this race in specific I'll tell you what I was on two turns of wedge for whatever reason and that was disgusting man like the freaking car didn't want to do anything it, it was a freaking sloth entering the damn corners just want to drive straight so now they're up to speed on this lap I'm more armed up. Let's not overdrive turn three. I should be able to get the pull. Also, by the way, today we are using race day 2016's paint scheme because I think he might be a Dale Earnhardt Jr. fan and Dale Earnhardt Jr. is good at this track. Yep, got the pull. So, let's go back to car setup and we will change that tire pressure to 25. It might not have seemed like the smartest idea at the time because this car is not going to turn nearly as well in the actual race because of that tire pressure increase. But, ow, I just drove into 20 sword for no fucking reason. But yes, you're, something that I've noticed is that it really can matter at the end of a short track run. Where you come to the end of it all and it's like the car just doesn't want to turn any freaking more. And this, I mean, it's still not going to want to turn that much at all at the end of my run just for my pit stop. But it's going to be still better. So, we'll leave the first lap of the race. See how long I can hold this lead. What the fuck, Tony Stewart, you goddamn idiot? Well, that, that kind of takes some pressure off my back. Ugh, brakes just aren't really working that much anymore. I'm trying to brake later so that he doesn't beat me into the corners, but now he's beating me into the corners and off the corners, and that's just tire wear. I'm trying to get it back. Now he's the first driver other than me to lead a lap in this race. Oh, we're getting a bit of a runoff. He's going to check up because I'm getting tight, and you can see it. But yeah, this is how I regularly break is... Regularly break. I gotta roll the R's if I want to get anything out in this English language. That's like, like a whole freaking half second before what I did a while ago. Because I'm just scared that he's going to dive underneath me. And that caused me to overdrive the corner and then he does it anyways. You'll see right there on the uh, tire wear indicator that my front tires were pretty much freaking shot. Jeff Gordon's going down. And I crashed into him. Like, I gotta get off the track, and I have to let him by, because I tell he wants to dive underneath me, so it's like I didn't have much of a choice there, but I didn't want the barrels either. Ugh, not again. 
So we'll get four tires, full tank of fuel. I think, well actually I don't think Jeff Gordon led that lap because other drivers were still staying out there. But aside from that one lap that Jeff Gordon led whenever he took the lead from me, I pulled back away after making the pass and just kept on leading. So I pretty much confirmed leading most laps in this race. I don't think anybody else could do it because I just led 19 laps right there and Jeff Gordon led one. So there's no way that someone else is going to go lead the other 20 laps. A uh, good pit stop, I'm thinking. 15.7, uh, not bad. I've had better, of course. Um, we're coming off pit road, I believe, in front of Jeff Gordon. Because, I mean, if he came out in front of us, he'd be right in front of us, not somewhere way over there. Hermie Sather wants to beat me into turn three because reasons. We're going to get back around him probably going to turn one or off of turn four. At, at first, it was like going into or going off the turn two, the gears wanted to shift in to third because I needed to just get that grip and that acceleration. And then it started doing that um, coming off the of turn four as well. And that's just what my tire has been like. It gets to that point where I have to shift in the third gear just to get the car to turn. And I'm stuttering and losing my focus. Why? Because fucking Hermes Sadler is just demented for whatever reason. He, he just won't leave me alone. And back into the lead, we cycle out. I'm actually surprised that we cycle out back into the lead. About the same distance in front of Tony Stewart that we were before we took our pit stop. And Jeff Gordon, I don't know, I think he might have had to repair damage or something whenever I crashed into him, but there's nothing else I could have done. He wanted to make that pass, and yeah, I, I let him make the pass. You know, I'm going to lose this race at this rate if these freaking lap cars don't stop blocking me on purpose. Like, Tony Stewart is just, his nose is far up my anus because these freaking lap cars are slowing me down. Stop it! We got Kevin Grubb and David Green up next. I mean, I'm having enough trouble driving the track as it is right now. Tony Stewart is actually catching me, so that's quite the recovery from whatever jackassery happened on, like, lap four off of uh, turn four where he just got tightened and ran into the wall. Collected, I think, Jeff Gordon and a couple other cars. Of course, you know, Kevin Grubb trying to throw out a block. Not even a good one, just a, a little wimpy block, like always, and that's what Kevin Grubb does. Fucking snowflake wimp. I don't even know if I should be making a cut because I have all these lap cars to pass. Like, I should be able to do it just fine. Of course, any of them block me just the wrong way and I get wrecked. Dive underneath David Green right here. <laughs> the car won't turn. And I got spun by lap traffic. It's so fucking predictable. And now everybody's crashing into me. EA Sports! It's in the fucking stupid ass game! Aha! Uh -huh. Can I win the race now? I doubt it! That's not my fault at all. Shut your face if you're going to say that's my fault. It's not my fault at all. I have to pass lap cars because I don't want them to slow me down. I'm not even trying to be too aggressive. I'm trying to enter the corner from the bottom because they're taking up just all the other space. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Tony Stewart's going to win this race now. And I didn't lose any positions because, you know, my driver did that thing where, like, they automatically take control of the car. The car's all bashed up. It was in pretty good condition. Now I'm in, like, what, third? Fourth? And we have six laps to go. Rusty Balls is pissed because he was the driver that crashed into me whenever I was spinning. I have no more grip because of this freaking damage. The Alan Hurt Jr. is getting his nose underneath me and they're just pulling away. Yeah, I can't keep up with them now that I have all this freaking damage. On, just give me some more bite this fucking car. <sighs> this, this damn game is, is not the, the most perfect freaking thing ever. It might be the greatest NASCAR game ever created, but it's just not perfect. These AI are programmed to get in your way for no reason. Well, we're catching back up a little bit, but we're running out of time. And I've got to push this car so hard if I want to get anything out of it. I mean, at least we'll still get a top five. Unless Rusty Wallace wrecks me, which is not entirely impossible. He didn't crash into me that hard, so I think it might be, uh... It might not... No, it's 60. I was thinking it might be 30 or some shit, but nope. I mean, if I want to pass Rusty Wallace, it ain't going to be with ease. I have to be prepared for some slamming in contact. If I ever even get to them, this car don't work anymore because the tires are worn. None of these cars work whenever the tires are worn at a short track. Trying to be aggressive, instead I'm just completely overshooting the corner. I could be a game show host with this freaking commentary of mine. What the hell happened to Dale and our junior? He's not behind me, now it's Harvick. Let's try entering the corner correctly, not aggressively, because aggression doesn't work at a short track on more tires. Freaking right side is about to die because we're at the end of that run. Just enter the corner correctly. Turn the... I am going 84 damn miles an hour! And this car don't want to turn! What? 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 
What? 84 miles an hour? Uh, yeah, we still got some work to do if we want to even win at this track. I probably didn't deserve to win that race. It was just, you know, having clean air is the reason why I was leading. Because if I had started, like, second place, I would have lost some spots at the start of the race and then been shuffling through the top five, just all back and forth and shit. But Tony Stewart's going to win this thing after choking at the very beginning of the race, and I'm going to take it home in fourth place. And finally, the game confirms that both my front tires are completely shot. Fucking lap cars, man! That was Tony Stewart's fourth win of the season, and because of that result, he is gaining 10 points on me in the point standings. Dale Arnold Jr. is 53 back. Mark Martin now falls um, over 100 points behind us, 120 back now. Jeff Gordon, he was having a good run, and I, I might have ruined it because I don't even know where he finished after all that nonsense. But yeah, he's fifth in points now, over 200 back. And then you've got the driver spec levels. I was so close to not making any freaking rivals in this race um, whatsoever, aside from maybe, I guess, Jeff Gordon, because, you know, he's there now, but it's nothing major. But Rusty Wallace, you know, he got caught up in the wreck, and he blames me entirely for it. He doesn't want to blame Christian Fittipaldi. Christian Fittipaldi's even pissed, and, well, we still got Dale Earnhardt Jr. on our side. It's like everything's just flipping around. Dale Earnhardt Jr. likes me. I, I still don't like Dale Earnhardt Jr. in these NASCAR video games. He's the one that I always freaking hate. So, tomorrow, before we do the Coca-Cola 600, the famous race at Charlotte, we also have the All-Star, which I probably have a good chance of winning and winning a million dollars, if that's what the purse always is, and I don't even need it, but we're going to go there to get some practice for the Coca-Cola 600 out of the way. The paint scheme you see right here was made by Cake Out Gaming. Fell short on making the main four paint schemes for this season in the paint scheme contest, so this is the special paint scheme we're using for that race. So, still means a lot. So, let's go to team management, and I think our shop edition just finally came in. Yes, it did. So we are immediately going to go to the bodies. I already know we have enough money to buy the next thing for our bodies and then also do our overhauling or repairing, whatever we got to do. Simulation software. Uh, golly, that's an amazing simulator if you look at that, just that picture. Body drafting. Um, we'll do this for the shortest amount of time. Just $900,000. And that'll be available for use in six races. So nothing too long. I was expecting like nine races per minute, but we haven't gotten the stuff like that just yet. Okay, so let's go in the garage. We can finally start building our new engine, which I've been wanting to do for a long time. I just waited because I wanted for that upgrade to come in. And yeah, for nine races, power, 80. Efficiency, 72. And power is what's most important. So you can see that, you know, really came in if we're going to 80 now. So um, yeah, for nine races, we're going to build something because that's, you know, the longest time, the better it gets. Also, 82 durability, so that's cool as well. And uh, we still got one race left on this engine right here. We also have to take a look at the chassis. Oh uh, yeah, we still got one race overhauling on number eight. We're using this in the next race as well. Looks like all use equipment as far as chassis and engines, but I think our body we're using that for the second time. It just wasn't worn down very much from Auto Club or California Auto Club, whatever. Uh, so, yep, no overhaul. I'm not going to do anything. So we're just going to repair this for two races, one hundred eighty-four thousand dollars. And in the next episode, we're going to be using this one, fresh body, seventy down for sixty-six drafting. Yeah, the ratings aren't going up because I, I need to finally start doing them overhauls, or not overhauls, shop editions for bodies and stuff like that. I also need to go to the, uh, the team members and stuff like that and sign new members if I can. I mean, I tried to a while back and it didn't really do anything, so maybe it'll do something this time off camera. Uh, sponsorship. The happiness with Coca-Cola goes up to 82. It was down to 80 after California because, uh, you know, we got a top five. Uh, qualifying in the top ten, we got the pull out there, so... And the happiness goes up for, you know, both of these darn things. So, yeah, I think it just went from, like, 72 to 76 with that one. Well, that's all I really have to tell you guys for this video. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the big exhibition race at Charlotte. See you next time. That's that and episode over.